Known as the soap maker of Correggio, Leonardo Cianciulli was an Italian serial killer who lured women to her home to sacrifice them. Before she was known as the soap maker of Correggio, who killed three women and turned their remains into soap and tea cakes, Leonardo Cianciulli was a devoted Italian mother who wanted to keep her son safe during World War II. <laughs> Her story begins at the turn of the 20th century. While she was married, she got pregnant 17 times. Of those 17 times, three of the pregnancies were lost due to miscarriages, and 10 of the children died in their youth. So when it came to her four surviving children, they couldn't have asked for a more protective mother. In 1939, Chianciulli's son Giuseppe Pansardi, her eldest son and favorite child, announced that he was going to enlist in the Italian army. Like many Italians during that time, he wanted to do his part in the World War II effort. This announcement, combined with her belief in superstitions, set the wheels in motion for Leonardo Cianciulli to become one of the most infamous female serial killers of the 20th century. Born on April 18, 1894, in the quaint southern Italian town of Montella, Leonardo Cianciulli had a tragic life from the start. She attempted suicide twice before she became an adult. When she married registry clerk Raphael Pansardi in 1917, Cianciulli claimed her mother cursed her because she disapproved of the marriage. In 1927, Cianciulli was imprisoned for fraud. Upon her release, she and her family moved from Potenza to Lacedonia, not too far from her childhood home. On July 23, 1930, the Irpinia earthquake struck. It would later be categorized as one of the most destructive earthquakes in Italian history. Cianciulli was one of the thousands who lost their homes in the disaster. Between her suicide attempts, her mother's alleged curse, and her various miscarriages, Leonardo Cianciulli realized that her life, to put it bluntly, sucked. So she went to see a fortune teller for some insight. The fortune teller, a traveling Romani woman did nothing to quell her fears. In your right hand I see prison, the fortune teller told her. In your left, a criminal asylum. Today, it's well understood that a woman can suffer from depression and anxiety after just one miscarriage, let alone three. And this is to say nothing of how her grief would have been compounded by the deaths of ten of her children that she brought to term. If Leonardo Cianciulli were alive today, she'd most likely be diagnosed with clinical depression, sent to undergo therapy, and put on a regimen of medication. But in the 1930s, while living in a small province nestled in the Matisse and Picentini Mountains in southern Italy, Leonardo Cianciulli resorted to superstition and paranoia. As it turns out, there is some evidence to suggest that Cianciulli's superstitious beliefs were a sign of deep-seated anxiety and depression. Today, many clinical psychologists believe that superstitions are born out of a fractured mind's attempts to make sense of the nonsensical. But of course, it's impossible to know whether modern medical treatment could have prevented what happened next. Dwelling on her mother's alleged curse and the Romani fortune teller's prediction, Leonardo Cianciulli became deeply superstitious. When her son Giuseppe told her in late 1939 that he was going to join the Italian army, Cianciulli turned to the one thing that she believed would keep him safe, human sacrifice. It's unclear where Cianciulli got her idea to sacrifice humans in order to save her son from dying in World War II. The Roman Catholicism prevalent in Italy during Cianciulli's time forbade human sacrifice as an abomination before God. Additionally, there's no known Romani belief or superstition that embraces human sacrifice. But regardless of where she got her idea, Leonardo Cianciulli would go on to murder three women before she was caught. Leonardo Cianciulli's first victim was a local spinster woman named Faustina Setti. Inviting Setti to her home under the guise of setting her up with a husband in 1939, Cianciulli instructed her to write letters to her family members, telling them that she would be visiting the man abroad. 
but Chianciuli drugged Seti with spiked wine before murdering her with an axe. Next, she cut Seti into nine pieces and gathered her blood into a basin. In her official statement after her arrest, she described the things she did next. I threw the pieces into a pot, added seven kilos of caustic soda, which I had bought to make soap, and stirred the whole mixture until the pieces dissolved in a thick, dark mush that I poured into several buckets and emptied in a nearby septic tank. As for the blood in the basin, I waited until it had coagulated, dried it in the oven, ground it, and mixed it with flour, sugar, chocolate, milk and eggs, as well as a bit of margarine, kneading all the ingredients together. I made lots of crunchy tea cakes and served them to the ladies who came to visit, though Giuseppe and I also ate them. Chanciuli also reportedly took Seti's life savings of 30,000 Italian lire, the equivalent of $17.94, and when adjusted for 2020 inflation, about $332 which she had received as payment for setting Seti up with a husband. On September 5, 1940, Chianciuli found another victim named Francesca Sovi. As with Seti, Chianciuli convinced Sovi that she had organized a teaching job for her abroad and made her write letters to her friends detailing her trip. And as she had with Seti, she fed her drugged wine, killed her with an ax, baked her into tea cakes, and stole her money. Her third victim, however, would be her last one. Virginia Casciapo was a noted soprano who once sang at the famed La Scala Opera House in Milan. Chianciulli had promised her a job working with an impresario in Florence, which prompted Casciapo to pay her a visit on September 30, 1940. As with her previous two victims, Chianciulli fed Casciapo spiked wine and killed her with an axe. This time, however, Instead of only baking her body into tea cakes and feeding them to her neighbors, Chianciuli also melted her flesh down and turned it into soap. She ended up in the pot like the other two. Her flesh was fat and white. When it had melted, I added a bottle of cologne, and after a long time on the boil, I was able to make some most acceptable creamy soap. I gave bars to neighbors and acquaintances. The cakes, too, were better. That woman was really sweet. Although Leonardo Chianciulli thought she had committed the perfect murders, she could not have been more wrong. Unlike her first two victims who had few concerned relatives, Caciapo had a very worried sister-in-law. She didn't believe Caciapo's letters detailing her quick departure and had, in fact, seen her entering Chianciulli's home the night she had left. Almost immediately, she reported her sister's disappearance to the Reggio Emilia police, who quickly investigated Chianciuli. At first, Leonardo Chianciuli defended herself. It was only when the police shifted the blame toward her beloved son Giuseppe that she finally broke down and admitted to everything. Chianciuli's trial lasted only a few days. She was found guilty of her crimes and granted a 33-year sentence that echoed the Romani woman's prophecy with eerie accuracy. 30 years in a prison, and three years in a criminal asylum. On October 15, 1970, Leonardo Chianciulli died of cerebral apoplexy, a type of hemorrhage, while she was still in the asylum. She was 79 years old. Her body was returned to her family for burial, but her murder weapons, including the pot that her victims were boiled in, were donated to the Criminology Museum in Rome. To this day, Museum visitors can see her collection of axes and peer inside the vat that she used to boil human beings.